is the kickoff track from an incredible CD from a guitarist out of New York City. And his name is Chardevoir and the CD Fifth Season. Uh, we're going to really get into this. And uh, he just came off a sold out place a show last uh, Friday in New York City at the Sage Theater. And uh, he's taken time out of his busy schedule, and we're really thankful to have him on the show finally. His name is Chardevoir. How you doing, Chardevoir? I'm great. How you doing, Joe? Uh, I'm doing great, and, and uh, you know, thanks thanks to come on the show. And, oh, uh, man, the privilege is mine, man. Definitely. So, so, so you're coming off a, a rousing success with a great performance at the Sage Theater. Uh, yeah, last Friday. Yeah, what, what kind of... all-star band with Cornelius Bumpus from the Steely Band. Right, right. I have Adam Klippel from Paul Simon on drums. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> I had Graham Hawthorne from Paul Simon. Uh -huh. Drummer with Paul Simon, and uh, uh, Adam Clipple on keys, percussions with Chokey, and myself on guitar. Yeah, no, uh, no, it was a sold out show. It was great. Now the Sage Theater actually is uh, located in what what part of New York City? Uh, it's in the, the theater district, uh -huh. 48th Street and 7th Avenue. So, so you, you get a pretty diverse crowd, people digging your music, and, and people coming oh, in for the night? Oh, yeah. it, was, it was a great crowd, man. They wouldn't even let us get off the stage. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> they wanted to hear more. Yeah, right, right. That's got to keep you floating for a few days, right? Oh, man. I'm still high from that. Right. So, uh, you know, fifth season, we, we've been playing here for quite a while here on The Upper Room, and... Um, you know, we should let our listeners know uh, the best place to pick it up is uh, through CD Baby right now? Yeah, cdbaby.com okay. or towerrecords.com. Okay. And uh, we'll we'll give our listeners uh, the correct spelling of your name, C-H-A-R-D-A-V-O-I-N-E, Shard of One. Uh, French descent? Yes. Uh -huh. uh, I, was, I was born in Haiti and grew up in Brooklyn. Okay. Yeah. And Shard of One means divine spirit. Oh, okay, cool. So, so uh, you know, uh, very background and now making your home in, in New York City. Um, you know, we were talking prior to starting off this interview about, uh, you know, the, the collaborations with all these talented musicians. Let's, let's talk about putting the, together a band for your most recent performance. What, what do you look for in a, a Shard of One performance, and what, what do you need on stage? What do I need on stage? Uh, keyboard, bass, drums percussions and singers uh -huh. i write the songs although i don't perform them on stage okay so i hire singers to sing right the right songs. so uh the, the last performance i had two singers i had a female singer and a male singer and, and it's uh a lot of people you you've worked with on this record you mentioned some of those, the singers uh you want to talk about uh you know frank williams and, and frank williams is originally from chicago and um, he's got his own CD that's just ready to come out um, probably the early part of next year. Okay. And also, I've written a few songs and produced a couple of songs on that CD. Originally from Chicago. And uh, Cal Cooper, which is the female singer on uh, Illusions, is from Brooklyn. She's a very old friend. We go way back. She, uh, she's the voice on, on uh, CD 101.9 doing CD 101.9 on the voiceover. She does a lot of voiceover. Uh, and uh, that's about Those are the two singers I have on the album, Cal Cooper and, and Frank Williams. Now, uh, we're talking about uh, your, your musical background and everything, uh, playing guitar. Is, is that the first instrument you picked up as a young My person? first instrument was conga. Oh, okay. Yeah. Back in Haiti? Uh, back in Haiti, but mostly everything happened here in the States because I've been here for 33 years. Okay. So this is, this is the experience is basically in New York. But I have dug back into my background and learned a lot of things about, you know, different rhythm in the Haitian culture. You know. Now, now uh, getting into the guitar, what uh, turned you on to the sixth string? The six strings, my father was a professional musician. Uh -huh. It was always a guitar in the house. Right. So, as a matter of fact, I was forbidden to play because my mother really had a lot of problems with my father being a musician. Oh, <laughs> and really? I grew up in a family with five sisters. Uh -huh. I was the only boy. 
And I used to hide to go play my guitar. I would take it to the neighbor's home and practice there. Wow. So that's how it started out. And when I was 13, it was the first time my mother heard me play. And she apologized for trying to keep me away from the instrument. She said, you sound pretty serious. I am sorry about <laughs> standing in your way. Right. And that was at 13. And you took off from there and... Um, yeah. I went to uh, music and arts high school in Brooklyn called Erasmus Hall. Uh huh. You know, uh, we have some pretty famous alumni from there. Barbara Streisand went to that school. Billy Crystal went to that school. James Williams from the D Train. Oh yeah, yeah. D Train went to that school. Uh, Will Downey so, went to that school. So, so when when they have those reunions, must be one great house band, right? Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh yes. So I, I mean, yeah. you know, Shard of Wine is. Uh, if you just tuned in, is my special guest here on the Upper Room with Joe Kelly, a very, very talented uh, musician, guitarist who has uh, blended jazz, funk, R and B into a great, great sound. A great CD called Fifth Season. Uh, you want to get into another track off the CD? Uh, yes, let's go to uh, number three. I remember Ernie. It's a very deep song. This is Ernie was a good friend of mine who got killed. Okay. He was murdered sitting in the car, and some strangers walked up to him and, and, and shot him dead. Wow. And uh, I went to his wake, and that night when I, went, when I got home after the wake, I was crying. And uh, I, wrote, I wrote I Remember Ernie in about 15 minutes. The melody just flew through. And I kind of felt that his spirit was passing through. Because he was, he was the first guy who kind of introduced me to samba, to Brazilian music. So that's why that, that song there is a samba groove. And it's a song called I Remember Ernie, number three on the track, on, on the CD. Okay, we'll get into it right now. My special guest this afternoon evening is Chardewan, fifth season. Go to cdbaby.com and we'll listen to this particular song, I Remember Ernie. And that's another great song from Shard of Juan, my special guest, and it's off of fifth season. That is I Remember Ernie, and you're in 2 WVOF 88.5 in Fairfield, Connecticut. This is The Upper Room with Paul Myers. Oh, I mean uh, Joe Kelly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a little side joke with uh, Shard of Juan. Well, that was funny. Yeah. Well, they probably wouldn't know what we're talking about. Right, right. But I, I, I guess I sound like a buddy of yours, right? Yeah, Paul Myers, right. great guitar player. Yeah. So, so Chardavon is based out in New York City, and uh, he'll be uh, performing throughout this, this winter down in New York, and uh, we're going to have him up to the studio and uh, perform right here. We Actually, we've got a cool setup. It's a see-through booth, and they, they have it on the television network as well here, so I think you'll dig something like this. Okay. And, uh, you know, what's it like? You know, you've been in New York City so many years as as a working musician and, and working on your own music. Have you seen things evolve and what's changed for the better and what things have gotten worse in New York City for a musician? Well, I've seen it change for the worse. Uh huh. You know, the, the music scene right now is is really it's, it's, not, it's not very good for jazz in New York. You know, a lot of the eminent spots are, are been closed. Mm -hmm. You know, the gate was closed for, for a long time. Uh, the threat. I heard there's rumors that uh, uh, Blue Blue Note is getting ready to be closed. Wow. Uh, yeah. Because uh, you, I, I, at least to me, I would think there's so many jazz venues, but I guess they're not getting filled up, right? They're not. Yeah. You know, I guess the overhead is kind of high. A lot of these clubs, jazz clubs, I guess the owners didn't own the building. Oh, okay. And, and the real estate, the situation in New York has changed a whole lot. So when, when their lease is up, they get hit with a certain amount of money that they really can't survive paying that kind of rent. Oh, okay. So yeah. do, you, do you see uh, some positive things going on? Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, there's also there are a lot of new spots. A lot of the Eastern Europeans have settled here in New York, and, and, and they're running the jazz clubs. Uh-huh. Uh, so, you know, so it's, it's a very up and down kind of business. And a musician like me, you know, I, I, I do create my own venues. So I do a lot of shows, a lot of concerts where I, I hire other musicians where I, sometimes I'm not even performing. I'm just a promoter. Oh, okay. And, and I keep it going. 
do, do you enjoy the promotion aspect of things? Because yeah, I, I enjoy doing it the way that I see it. Because, okay. you know, at times we, com- we, we complain about certain things, but we actually not doing anything about it. Right, right. You follow? Yeah, I follow. Yeah, uh, definitely. So we complain about the little bit of money to pay us, and we're not doing anything. So I would promote something and pay a musician generously, mm-hmm. you know, or, or do it in a certain way where everybody wish that would have been the way that we get you know, treated at the clubs. Yeah. Well, that, that that's pretty noble of you to do something like that. I'm sure the Thank musicians you. love that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's why everybody was, after last Friday, the, the owner offered us the opportunity to be there every once, every last Friday of the month. And everybody said, let's go for this. You know? Wow. Because every every time, I was, uh, some, basically, my pattern is like every every other month I was doing the event. And the crowd kept growing and kept growing and growing. And last Friday was like basically a sold out show. And so we must be doing something right. And uh, that that is uh, tentatively for starting in January? Yeah, January 30th, my uh, guest female singer is going to be Karen Bernard. Okay. I kind of brought her name up. Yeah, that's right. Uh, yeah. Uh, she's also, she has a site called KarenBernard.com if you so desire to check it out. Uh, you could go to cdbaby.com also. Uh, her resume is impressive. Uh-huh. Oh, very impressive. You, you, you may she's, mention... She's, oh, go ahead. She's worked with the best of the best. With D'Angelo and... D'Angelo, yeah. Erica Badu, uh, Incognito, Groove Collective. Wow. Shaka Khan, Luther. Uh, she's done many jingles. So, uh, she, I think she has two CDs out now. So, so you can feel comfortable just grooving on your guitar when you got stellar vocals like that up front. Right. No, but I've worked with her. We've been working. She's from Brooklyn, so we've been working for the past 10, 15 years together. Uh-huh. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm looking at the album cover of Fifth Season from Shard of One, and, he, and he's embracing the guitar. So we, we've got a lot of musicians who, who listen to our show, and I wanted to know what's... Uh, you like to take on stage and what you used in the studio on this particular record? Oh, uh, this particular record, I've used a guitar synth called a Yamaha G50, and that was connected into a, a Yamaha MU100 tone generator, mm-hmm. and also uh, an Ovation standard ballad copy. This is an acoustic guitar. Uh, that's, that's, that's basically the gear that I use in terms oh. of guitar gear. On, on stage as well, right? Uh, on stage, I use something different. I use a Les Paul uh, going to a Mesa Boogie amp and also the uh, acoustic guitar, the, uh, the uh, Ovation Standard Ballad. Yeah. Now, now on, on the back of the CD, a great musician in his own right, Dave Valentine, gives you some major, major respect right there. Uh, talk talk a little bit about how how you ran into him and you know, how we dug the record so much. Uh, a mutual friend of ours, Michael Grant, kind of brought us together. Uh-huh. He told Dave about me, and, uh, and Dave wanted to meet me. So we we met, and uh, he heard me play, and he was, imp- he was impressed by it. And I said, you know, would you like to be on my, my new CD? He said, yeah, I'm honored, you know. Tell me when and where. <laughs> right. So... They came down and they recorded the song. Actually, did that track that uh, Dave Valentin did on, uh, I think that's track number five, mm-hmm. called Jamal Song. Right. Yeah, that was that was the first take. Oh, really? That Just was one the first take. and only take. That CD right there, mostly everything on there is 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 one take, the first take. I didn't do any overdub, no punching, nothing. Wow. So, and so it was the same for you with Eves also. His keyboard track was the first, the first take, the only take, no punching. So, so, so that's pretty efficient, and it sounds as great as it is. Yeah. Right. And I kind of read a lot of stuff on Miles Davis, the thing that he was doing, why he was such a big icon in, in, in the jazz world. It, it, you know, he, he, he Miles could be doing some recording with, with some of the top-notch session players in New York, and. And they will record the song, and then they will ask Miles for him to do another take, a third, fourth, fifth take. 
and Miles always chooses the first one. No matter what, right? Yeah. Yeah. You know, you could do as many takes as you want. If this is my record, I take the first one. So based on that, a lot of cats have to be ready when, when, when they were about to record with Miles because they knew it was going to be about the first take. And from 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 reading that article, I was like, wow, i like to do a first take record myself because that, that's really impressive. Yeah. And fifth season is available uh, by going to a great site for uh, independent music. It's cdbaby.com, and uh, our listeners should know that Shard of Wands' name is spelled, spelled C-H-A-R-D-A-V-O-I-N-E. And uh, fifth season's up there. You can listen to various tracks off the record and, and read more about uh, Shard of Wands' extensive biography and uh put a review up there and uh you know there was a review up there there was a lady uh from cd 101 uh by prescott yeah, she, she, oh, didn't yeah. she do the play she, she uh she was the host of, of of the cd release party oh okay she she did mama i want to sing right the, was that the place she did or was she involved with that i, I don't know yeah but she was she was the air personality at cd 101.9 oh okay yeah well, well one of the top ones yeah. For some reason, she's no longer there. Yeah, I think she was on BLS before. Right. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, uh... So, I, so Joe, when are you going to write me a review? You know, that's my homework. <laughs> you, just <gave> me, <laughs> you just gave me a homework assignment. <laughs> yeah, two words, man. One word. That's oh, cool. no, I'll, I'll put more up that because I feel <laughs> that strong about the record, but, yeah. Okay, to make sure you don't sign Paul Myers, okay? Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, that would be a trip. <laughs> Hey, how about, how about uh, you know, there's so so much different turns on this record as far as musical styles, which which I love, which is great, because that's what we do here on the radio show. But um, what, what did you listen to uh, growing up as an early musician, and, and what, are you, what are you playing in your in your my, home? And your... My, my first passion was, was Jimi Hendrix. Uh-huh. I went from Jimi Hendrix to jazz and from jazz to a little classical. And... You know, growing up in New York, uh, my concept of music, you know, you listen to, to music, you walk in, in Brooklyn, you're going from neighborhood to neighborhood. What happened is, like, you, you pass the Jamaican neighborhood, you hear a record, you hear a reggae record you like. Right, right. But, you, but you're not into reggae music. But this, this reggae record just crosses over and it attracts your attention. And then you walk to a Hispanic in Puerto Rican neighborhood, you hear a salsa record that attracts your attention, and so forth and so on, and and, and that, that that's what that's what has really influenced me to do the record that way. You know what I mean? It's just the sounds of music with this you know multi ethnic neighborhood where everybody's playing their music and you're absorbing it. And that's that's one of the things that's so special about New York. Right. Yeah, just so many different sounds and right. And, and it, it was the same thing with uh with country and western. When I heard Garth Brooks, uh-huh. I liked his music. Right, right. You know, but I'm not into that kind of music. So I always wanted to do a record that will attract people that are not jazz and food. So how, how about live? Do you incorporate uh, so many of the different styles? Excuse me? How about live? Do you play a, a lot of different styles as oh, well? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I do. Oh, yeah. Right, yeah, right. Yeah. yeah, definitely. Go from the samba to the funk to a little bit of reggae to a little bit of rock and then try to be tasty doing it. So so what what's uh, in your CD player at Shard of Juan's home? What, what do you listen to? I listen to Lettucey. Uh-huh. Are you, are you hip to Lettucey? I, I've heard of him, yep. Oh, she's from Oakland. Awesome. L-E-D-I-S-I. Let us see. Okay. Ooh, I know, Joe, I know you would love her. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Uh, um, I listen to a lot of Larry Carlton. Yeah, great, great artist. Um, Wes Montgomery. Mm-hmm. Ray Charles. Uh, uh, you know, Bo Diddley. Some blues singers. It all depends on the week. <laughs> right, right. This week I've been listening to a lot of Earth, Wind, and Fire. Oh, yeah. I just saw them on TV the other day on Ellen yeah. DeGeneres' show, yeah. Yeah, so it's, 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 that's how it is for me. And then I go to my period where, you know, 
listen to some classical. Um, and uh, it kind of balances everything out. So, so you got great taste in music besides your own. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> so so uh, I want to thank uh, my special guests here on The Upper Room with Joe Kelly and WVOF. Uh, Shard of Juan and uh, Fifth Season. Uh, you can go to cdbaby.com and uh, Shard of Juan CD is up there. And uh, check out the tracks. He's a New York artist, which we're only an hour away, so we consider New York just as local too. So, you know. It's all about supporting uh, local musicians, especially indie musicians. And uh, look forward to having you up. Hey, th- let's make it before you, you do uh, the regular stint at, at Sage. That would be cool. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. Most definitely. So, uh, you know. And also your thing this coming fall, right? What's that? The concert you're doing? Oh, yeah. Are you doing a fundraiser for the station? Or yeah, we we Your anive- doing- anniversary or something? Uh, actually, that that happened last year. Oh, okay. But um, yeah, we have live concerts here all the time, so you know we got to get you up here and have the people get turned on to your live performance. And, I'm uh, looking forward to it. So why don't we go out with a song you you collaborate with Hubert Eves the Third and Dave Valentine, oh. uh, Jamal's song. Yes. And and the song was written in honor of who? My son. Okay. His name is Jamal. Okay, this is uh, Shard of Juan's son's song, a Jamal song. And uh, pick up fifth season, go to cdbaby.com. And uh, thanks once again, Shard of Juan. Okay.